Good morning, brothers, sisters, and family. God bless you. Peace be with you. It is Brother Toby. I know that I'm looking like a wild man out here, like John the Baptist out here, but I just got done taking my baby girl to school. For those of you who don't have kids, you got to take them to school really early in the morning, like 6.30, um, 7 o'clock, you know, something like that. So, anyways, forgive me for my... Uh, appearance, but uh, to those of you who um, are ready to seek God today and ready to hear the word of the Lord today, um, you don't really care how it's how it's presented to you, um, you know, because God can speak to us through children, He can speak to us through animals, He can speak to us through nature, He can speak to us through a wild looking man wearing a robe. I mean, that's how He did it with John the Baptist, right? So the majority of the prophets were looking crazy too, anyways. Um, guys, today I want to talk about confession. I want to talk about something very powerful, um, very, very powerful thing that that that, that human beings have um, that they very, very seldom use um, because it takes great humility. Um, guys, confession is is a powerful thing that we have. It's a powerful tool in our arsenal. It's a powerful weapon that we have against the enemy. Confession of our sins. Confession um, is what breaks the chains of our addictions. It's what breaks the chains of our um, problems. It's what breaks the chains of our sin. It's what causes, it's the initial thing that begins change. Is a confession. And the reason why people are so slow to confess is because they're prideful. The reason why people are so slow to confess what they've done wrong is because they don't want to admit that they are wrong. But this is the way it works with God and this is the way it works with other people. We as human beings have done wrong and we need forgiveness. Now we need forgiveness from number one, God. We need forgiveness from those who we've wronged and we also need to be able to forgive ourselves. Now, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, we're, we're all humans. We're all going to make mistakes. Okay, that's true. But that's not accepting responsibility. What you're doing is you're classifying yourself as a human being, saying that everyone makes mistakes so that it, it's okay that you do as well. And that's a half truth. Because what you're doing by making that statement is, is you are trying to justify yourself. You're trying to acquit yourself of responsibility. It is true that we are all human beings. It is true that we all make mistakes. It is true that we all need forgiveness. But I'm talking about confession of your sins. Confession of my sins. Confession of the things that we do when we're not following the path of God. When we're not, when we're not walking in the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about confession of taking responsibility and owning what we've done wrong. I'm talking about when we've wronged our brother or sister and confessing it. I'm talking about when we've done something that we know we shouldn't have done and confessing that to God, not sh not sh just shrugging it off like it's no big deal, not acting like, well, everyone else does it, so, you know, it's okay that I did it. No, I'm talking about weeping and mourning for what you've done wrong accepting responsibility for your transgressions for your sins and having a confession now guys um first of all in order to confess you've got to you've got to accept that you're wrong okay you've got to accept that fact You've got to accept the fact that you're wrong. And you have to acknowledge. Now, here's the kicker, guys. Here's the, here is the big, 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 not the kicker, the key to confession. The key to confession is acknowledgement. Guys, denial is not just a river found in Egypt. Okay? <laughs> I know that's an old school joke. But it's true. It's still true. Denial is not a good thing. For us to confess our sins, we must 
first acknowledge our sins because confession is an outward show of what's ha- of what's already happening in- inward inwardly we need to acknowledge that what we've done is wrong now this is what started my relationship with God and this is what reconciles my relationships with people that I've r- done wrong is you've got to be willing to God first to acknowledge that you are not a good person. No one is. No one is. Before Christ, no one is. Before you have a relationship with Jesus, no one is. Before you have a right relationship with God, no one is good. No man is righteous. No, not one. I don't care what you, how, you know, tidy you think your life is. You've lied before. You've stolen before. You've committed adultery. You've lusted with your eyes. You know, you've coveted. You've had idols in your life. And that's Those are all very serious sins that God takes seriously. And when you sin, you hurt the heart of God because God loves you. And when you sin, you are actively hurting God. You are doing things that he doesn't like. You're doing things that displease him. You're doing things against him. And when when people do things that you don't like, when people do things against you, you get hurt. And you expect those people, when you bring it to their attention that they've hurt you, to, to repent, to acknowledge what they've done and to you know, confess to you and to ask for your forgiveness. If they love you, they won't have a problem doing that. You hear me? So with God, we must, if you guys are, if you guys are feeling turmoil today, if you guys are feeling heartache today, if you guys are feeling like you just don't have a right relationship with God today, if you're feeling like, where is that relationship with God that I used to have? If you guys are feeling like, You know, there's something between you and God. You need to humble yourself. You need to humble yourself before God. Stop being prideful. Stop being arrogant. And you need to go before the throne room of God. You need to go before God. He's he's, he's right there with you. And you need to say, Father, I confess my sins. I confess I did this the other day. I did that the other day. I lusted with my eyes. I lusted in my heart. I lied to someone. I, I, I did something that I wasn't supposed to do. I was coveting. I was allowing myself to, to, to daydream and meditate on sin that, you know, whatever. I, I did this. I fell to this. I stumbled on this. God, I became so angry that I started plotting someone's murder. <laughs> you know, we've all done it. Don't act like I'm the only one. You know, harboring unforgiveness in your heart. Lord, I've, 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 I'm not... No, I haven't forgiven this person in my heart. Please help me, God. I'm sorry. I, you know, I acknowledge that I, this person needs forgiveness just like me. Father, forgive them and help me to forgive them. And, you know, guys, if there's something in your life today that is causing a wedge between you and God, I guarantee you that it is unrepentant sin. I guarantee you. It is, it is unconfessed sins. The Word of God says... In John, first, uh, first John chapter one, that if we confess our sins, He is merciful. He is just to forgive us of all unrighteousness, to forgive us, and to cleanse us, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Guys, I'm telling you, put this weapon to use. This is a nuclear bomb. In the, in the arsenal of a Christian. This is a nuclear bomb in the arsenal of a human being created in the image of God. Is our acknowledgement of sin and our confession of that sin and those sins. And not only those two things, guys, you've got to acknowledge, you've got to confess, but then you have to repent. You have to say, God, I am willing to change. I am willing to to stop being this way. I am willing to do differently, to be different, to act different, to speak different, to say different, to live differently. Help me, oh God. Here is my problem, Lord. I have a problem with lying. I have a problem with lusting. I have a problem with coveting. I have a problem with idolatry. I have a problem with laziness. I have a problem with greed. (coughs) Oh Lord, I have a problem with gossip. I have a problem keeping my mouth shut. I have a problem, Lord. But oh, you, oh God, to you, oh God, 
You can do anything. You can help me. Father, today I confess my sins before you. God, I have been an adulterer. I have been a liar, a greedy person. I've been unforgiving when I have obtained forgiveness. Lord, please, in the name of Jesus, please, in the name of Jesus, change me. I don't want to be this way anymore. I want to follow your way. I want to follow your path. I want to, instead of being a thief, I want to work hard with my hands. Instead of being a liar, I want to live to tell the truth, no matter how bad it hurts. Instead of being greedy and idolatrous, I want to be content and thankful for what I have. I want to be generously giving to others. Oh Lord, instead of hating and harboring bitterness in my heart, I want to be forgiving and I want to pour out love onto my enemies. Oh God, you can do it in me. Father, change my heart so I can give you glory. Change my heart so I can be clean from the inside out. I don't want to live like this anymore, God. I confess my sins to you. I confess today, Lord, that I need you. I confess today, Lord, that I want change and that I need to change. And oh, thank you, God. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for forgiving me. I confess and I repent and I will choose this day to live differently and to serve you, oh God. Brothers and sisters, that is the way that any person in life begins a relationship with the almighty El Shaddai, God of angel armies. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, died so that we could obtain this forgiveness. That's how much, that is how powerful a confession, acknowledgement, confession, and repentance is. Because of what Jesus did, he did it all. The finished work on the cross. But we have a part to play. It's a covenant. There's an agreement. God fulfilled his end of the agreement. But we've got to fulfill our end of the agreement. In order to sign the contract of what God is offering all of humanity, every single person must acknowledge their sins. Confess their sins. And repent from their sins and this might be a daily thing for a Christian no it shouldn't be a daily thing for a mature Christian because mature Christians should be walking in victory but it should be part of our daily practice even the Lord's prayer as Jesus himself God in the flesh taught us to pray Heavenly Father forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Guys, Jesus taught us to pray and to confess. And I don't believe because of pride. I see it all the time. People are so prideful. And this was the problem with the Pharisees. This was the problem with the Pharisees. They were so prideful that they did not want to acknowledge that they themselves were sinners. They didn't want to acknowledge that they were just like the harlot, just like the prostitute, just like the corrupt tax collector, just like the heathens and the pagans, that they were hypocrites, that they were greedy, idolatrous, unmerciful, arrogant. They didn't want to acknowledge that they needed to confess their sins. They didn't want to acknowledge that they needed to repent. And all of you people out there, when you wrong another human being, Oh, it is every bit as important. It is every bit as important that you repent to them. Oh, this is where it gets thick, family. You guys are always so quick to just shout out to God and say, Oh, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Throw it up in the air. A general, a general, I need forgiveness like everyone needs forgiveness. That old shucking the responsibility that old brushing the shoulders off that old treating it like it's no big deal god everyone does it i do it you know just forgive us all no <clears throat> but when it comes to confessing to your brother 
or your sister or your mother or your father or your cousin or your aunt or your friends when it comes to confessing to another human being to their face it requires a measure a large measure of humility someone who you've wronged someone who you've mistreated someone who you've done wrong someone who you have sh have shown a lack of love to someone that you prejudged someone that you were harsh with someone when they didn't deserve it someone that you went off on because you were having a bad day someone who you did a, a child that you maybe failed to discipline or you failed to love or a mother or father that you failed to honor when they were rightfully trying to do right by you whatever it was a friend or a family member and you wrong them and you have such a hard time because of pride admitting that you did wrong admitting acknowledging that you hurt this individual acknowledging and confessing to this individual that you were wrong putting your face on the floor <laughs> in front of them in humility to say brother, sister my friend I have wronged you I have wronged you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I am so sorry. I made a mistake. And with God's help, I will never do it again. I need your forgiveness. Oh, wow. How liberating. How freeing. How much healing power and restoration can happen when someone humbles themselves and repents someone humbles themselves and confesses and acknowledges their sin you know guys that's why we get hurt a lot of times we get hurt and the only thing we want to see this is why so many marriages fail we get hurt someone wrongs us and we get hurt and we want to the only thing we want to see is that individual confess and repent guys god does not want to to beat you up over the head over your sins but he wants to acknowledgement and confession. That's what's going to bring the healing. When someone does you wrong, don't you want them to acknowledge it? What they did was wrong. It's like, okay, it's cool. Just acknowledge that you did me wrong. Acknowledge that that was wrong. Acknowledge that that was not right. As long as you go about acting like like someone punches you in the face and then just walks by and just like, yeah, it's no big deal. You know, it's not a big thing. Just 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 move forward. You know, don't make it a big deal. You know, everybody everybody messes up sometimes, but they never acknowledge that they punch you in the face. They never acknowledge that they walk by and they spit on you. They never acknowledge that they spit on you. They never acknowledge that it was a big deal. It was a big deal. When people sin against you, they try to act like it's not a big deal. When you sin against other people, you try to act like it's not a big deal. But when someone slightly wrongs you, cuts you off in traffic, you're right there. You go to hell, flipping them off. <laughs> I mean, come on. You need mercy and grace just like everybody else needs mercy and grace. And so, guys, when you wrong somebody and when you wrong God and when you wrong your brother and sister, it is your duty to take responsibility. It takes It takes courage. And it takes love and it takes humility to acknowledge that you're wrong, to confess your sins. Jesus said, if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he, if he, if he repents, then let there be forgiveness. We are supposed to correct people. When someone sins against us, or if we see someone sinning against somebody else, we correct them. Hey, that wasn't right. That was not right. That was not done in love. That was not done in humility. That was not done in wisdom. That was not done uh, properly. That wasn't done in the Holy Spirit. You hurt somebody. You need to. You need to repent. You need to change. You need to ask. You need to acknowledge and confess that what you did was wrong, and and obtain that forgiveness from that person because you wronged them. You wronged me. When you, Jesus said, if there is repentance, then forgive. If, if there is repentance, then forgive. That that goes with God too, guys. You're not going to enter the throne room. You're not going to enter a, a, a life with God as long as you're, you have unrepented and unconfessed sins. Jesus read it in the end of Matthew. Jesus said, for those who repent, there is forgiveness. In the end of Matthew, in the end of Luke, when he was resurrected, he said, he said, for those who repent, there is forgiveness. And so, guys, if someone is if someone is humbles themselves enough to come to you, and I, I've 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 heard stories about this, guys. I've heard stories about this, where 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 parents who have molested and raped their own children, 
and their children get old enough and come to them and 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 show them and and and, and bring that to their attention what you did was wrong and these parents who molested their kids or rape their kids or the people maybe not even parents but other people and these people act like it never happened you don't remember correctly that's not what happened how do you you're making this up in your head because they don't want to acknowledge it they don't want it to come out they don't want it out of the closet they don't want to have to confess they don't want to have to repent because it takes humility but then there are those situations where it has even happened where a child has grown up and brought it to their their parents attention and there has been confession and there has been repentance with deep sorrow. No matter what a person has done, no matter what they have done, no matter what they have done, if they acknowledge, confess, and repent, they are due forgiveness. And you must forgive because God has first forgiven you. So my brothers, sisters, and family today get right with God. By confessing, by acknowledging, confessing, taking responsibility and owning what you've done wrong. Own it. Own it. And repent. Ask God for forgiveness and he will forgive you like that. Like that. Our God is so good and so merciful and so great and he keeps his promises. He does everything in his power minus free will from a human being to Give us the best opportunity to succeed and obtain his love and his mercy and his forgiveness because he does not break his word, even though we break ours all the time. Secondly, get right with someone today. Get right with your brother. Get right with your sister. Get right with your parents. Get right with your children. Get right with whoever you've wronged. Search your heart and tell God to search your heart. King David said, search my heart, O Lord. Show me where I'm in error so that I can change. You be the same way. You speak the same way. You feel in your heart the same way. Let God examine your heart and stop being so stubborn and prideful and right in your own estimation. The word of God says that a fool is always right in his own estimation. Don't be a fool. Don't let your foolishness cause division between you and God and cause division between you and other people. Let there be reconciliation. Let there be reconciliation today. Let there be reconciliation between God and you. Let there be reconciliation between you and your relative and your friend and your family member and even your enemies if possible. Let it be so. This is the will of God for your life. I love you guys. Peace be with you. God bless you and keep you. I love you guys. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone watching this video right now that they will acknowledge, they will humble themselves before you, Father. Use this mighty weapon that you've given us, acknowledgement, confession, and repentance, Lord, to get a right relationship with you, to be reconciled to you today by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus and the testimony and witness and message of Jesus. And God, let them also humble themselves down and get right with their brothers and sisters and ask for forgiveness, Father, out of love, out of love, in Jesus' name. Call a friend up, call a relative up, say, hey, I need to sit down, I need to talk with you today. If not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, the next day. If not the next day, you tell me when I need to sit down with you and talk to you. Serious things I need to talk to you about. And you go and you buy them lunch, you buy them dinner, you buy them coffee, whatever, and you sit down and you Give them a heartfelt apology for wronging them so that you can be reconciled and it will liberate your soul. Brothers, sisters, and family, I love you. God bless you. Peace be with you. Let the will of God be done and let there be reconciliation today. In Jesus' name.